Well, welcome to this video. Chances are you're watching this because you love to create and make what you do, but there's an element of frustration when you don't then get rewarded with a sale. Now, in essence, selling art is a fairly simple, straightforward process, and there are plenty of artists around the world already doing it. But unfortunately, not anywhere near enough, right? So many people are still stuck in a full or even part-time job and not actually in a position to make a living from their art. Give me a shout out in the comments below if you are still working full-time but you dream of actually switching over and building your art business so that you can make that living from what you love to do. Now, in this video, I'm going to share five steps to selling more of your art online. Now, if you haven't started selling on a regular basis or you're further down the track and your art sales have dried up, make sure to watch my previous video that I entitled Art Sales Dried Up and then the seven steps to getting your art sales started again, because those seven steps will kind of get you to the beginning of the process. And from there, you can ramp things up and focus on making more sales. And this video, as I've said, is specifically for online. There are plenty of strategies that I share on this channel for selling offline as well, but I thought today we'd focus in on that because I know that so many of you have an online store, have opened an online store, or maybe are still dreaming of setting up and opening that online store. So let's focus on how you can make more sales there. Now, if we haven't met yet, I'm Sophie, artist, entrepreneur, and art business coach, helping artists just like you to build profitable businesses from your creative passion. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future content. All right, let's dive into those five steps for selling more art online. Now, first up, I should say that we're going to assume that you've got all your foundations in place. If you haven't, make sure to check out that previous video or other videos that I've got, and I'll link below this one in terms of building your business plan, your marketing plan, all those foundational pieces that you need for an art business. Number one is to have a niched and limited item shop. So we've all heard that old adage, less is more. It's something I tend to think about actually all across my life, but that's, that's a topic for another video altogether. So let's imagine something I like to do in my spare time, which is to go clothes shopping. So imagine for a moment you go clothes shopping and you go into a store that is just absolutely packed. There's racks and racks, different colors, different styles, different sizes, this thing over here and another style over there, and you're just bombarded with like a visual overload. Now, the chances are that you're going to feel totally overwhelmed and you're going to say to yourself, I don't know that I can even begin to find what I'm looking for in there. So I'm going to leave and find another store that's perhaps more what I'm looking for and has less in it, right? So now you walk down the street and you find that little boutique store that has a limited range, perhaps even a limited color palette and you're either going to love it or hate it, right? You're either going to walk in and go, oh my God, this is exactly the sort of clothes I want to wear. I'm in. All I need to do is make a decision on what I'm going to buy. Or you'll just poke your head around and go, that's not my style. I'll go to the next one. Then you go down the street and you find another one. You're like, oh no, this is, this is what I'm looking for, right? It's so much easier because when you go in there and you find the right store that has the type of clothing that you're looking for, it's very often not just the case of buying one item. It might be the case of buying two. Now this happened to me exactly the other day. I walked past the store that I looked in before and was like, I'm, I'm not going in there. This just looks like a big jumble sale. And now it's been taken over by somebody else. Has a really clear, specific line of clothing in a few limited colors. I walked in and thought, wow, there are all these items. And I ended up buying three things because there was so much in there that I loved and they all went together. So I'm hoping that this is beginning to make sense and you can translate that across to art. So imagine if you have a website that is just packed full of everything you've ever made, right? It's overwhelming to your audience. We know that you want to have a clear niche. Check out this video on how to find your niche here. So once you're assuming that you have a clear niche, keep your shop limited, right? It could be that you have all these different things, but you keep a lot of them in draft and you're just going to have a one collection up for the moment so that the people who love what you do don't have that overwhelming choice. They're just looking going, oh my goodness me, okay, here's the 10 or 20 pieces. Well, I love them, I'll have this one and this one. That's ultimately what you want after all. 
So at number two, you want to make it easy for them to buy. Now this is something that I see over and over again. There might be beautiful artwork on a website that I'm clicking around, kind of going, hey, I can't see the price. Now I put it in my cart, but the cart doesn't tell me now if there's gonna be postage and packaging. Like how much is that? Will they ship to my country? Actually, I'm not even sure what size it is or what it's made from. And sometimes I can't even distinguish if it's an original or a print. All right, so the, the challenge here is that we make the artwork and we know that likely, unless your former career was website builder, you don't wanna have to do the listings. So you get through them really quickly. You get the photographs, you put a photograph up, you put the title, you put the price, you write like two lines, you know, oh, thank God that's listed. But that's not good enough, right? That is not good enough. Your audience deserves more. Your audience is online and we all make really quick snappy decisions, right? It's yes, I like it, do I want it? It needs to have all the information that the customer needs. What size is it? If it's the original, what size is it? How is it made? Is it framed? How's it going to arrive? When's it going to arrive? What's the cost to get it delivered? Where do you deliver? Like, how long is it gonna take? All of the things people are going to want to know in one easy place. Right, you want to make it simple. And ideally, here's the less is more theme, you ideally don't want them clicking around either. Right, it's, there's the picture, I've clicked on the picture, it pops up and there's all the information I need with a nice highlighted add to cart. And then when they've added it to cart, you want to make sure that the shopping platform that you have your website built on is really easy and simple to use. And it's again, it's got all the information on there for them to use, one click, they pay and they're out. And then they know what is going to happen next. They get a confirmation email, they've made this purchase, there's a tracking number, when are they going to get the painting? So you want to think about what are the things that the customer might want to know, right? List out all the things you would want to know if you were a customer, and then make sure you cover it all off. Because remember, if they've got a question, they're unlikely to reach out to you. They might do, but they might again just go, oh, this is too hard, I'm going somewhere else. It's very noisy in the studio this morning. Remember, if all the information isn't there, or they're at all confused, or they're uneasy to make the purchase, especially if it's an original and it's a large amount of money, they're going to leave and go somewhere else. Now, if you're selling on a third party site, if you're selling prints or cards or products or smaller items, then obviously that's a little bit easier. But again, we want to know as a customer all the information just quickly and easily. If it's a print, what sizes is it available in? What frames will it fit? Does it come mounted? Will it come rolled in a tube? Will it arrive flat? How long is it gonna take? Same, same questions. So this might be a bit laborious for you to do, Sometimes it's easy to use a third party platform. A lot of people I know have shops on Etsy. A lot of it is pre-filled and you just have to add in your information, add in your photos, publish listing. So there's definitely something to be said for using a really well-built website or a third party site that's an e-commerce site and that has all the information on there. So step number three for making more art sales online, you wanna maximize the best selling times in the year. So think about when the holiday times are. When are the periods that people are naturally going to be looking for gifts? Maybe spring, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Those times of year typically have a surge in shopping and you want to make sure that you are there with a special offer for those particular times. Remember that typically January, February, March are quieter months than other months, unless of course you maximize out on Valentine's Day, in which case February is gonna be your best month. But I know that over the years, January tends to be really, really quiet. People have spent a lot of money on Christmas, and so that typically there's a bit of a lull in product purchase in January. Things will pick up. For me, I used to find that August was a quiet month, especially when I was in the UK, school holidays, you know, everything geared up for September. So think about where you live, think about your business type, your products, what are times of the year or yearly festivals that you can plug into that you know are going to be high sales point. Typically Christmas is going to be one for everybody, so you wanna think about that sort of October, November time as being peak time for you to be making your online art sales. Plan for this, you know, in your business plan, you'll be planning it all out. 
I would typically use my quarter planner that's part of that business plan to plot out when I would be doing all of those sales. Talking of, step number four is to make regular sales offers. So I don't want to say that no sales will happen without a promotion because that's not true. You will make organic sales, but again, we just don't know when that's going to happen. You might make one one month, nothing for two months, 10 the next month. It's much easier if you are more in control of that. So by creating these short time-based offers that ideally you can send out on your mailing list, we've talked about this in the previous video, then you're more in control. You'll begin to know the numbers. I have this number of people on my mailing list. When I send out an offer with a discount code, I typically convert this percentage of my mailing list and make sales. And it will be much easier for you to be in control of that. Remember, of course, you don't always want to be selling in terms of your marketing. So you want to have periods where you're simply sending out valuable marketing content that's of interest to your audience. If everything you send is a sales email or sales social media post, people will unfollow really, really fast. Make sure, as I said, that they're planned ahead of time so you're not suddenly thinking, oh, goodness me, um, I need to do an offer, I'll do one next week. You've got that planner and you're thinking, ha, ah, okay, my next one is going to be in April and it's now February. So I've got plenty of time to think ahead. You know, how long am I going to be doing kind of organic, nice value-based posts? Now it's time to build up to that offer. And remember that people love a special offer. It doesn't have to be anything massive, just that special offer, tiny discount code, free postage and packaging, whatever you can do, adding in if someone buys a print, you know, maybe buy one, get one half price, or if they buy a, this print, then they get a pack of cards for free, just for a short period of time. So you want to use deadlines, limited numbers, only five available, or 48 hours only, that sort of thing. And then number five, and this for me is really, really important. And I think, again, a lot of people get this wrong. They try and use ads too early in the game. Oh, I've got a brand new business and a brand new product. I'm going to put some ads behind it and that will help send traffic. Well, it will do. It will send. And what do we mean by traffic? You know, that's when we send people to go and look at an online listing. So imagine for a moment you set up your own website and you've decided to run some Google ads or some Facebook or Instagram ads and you've got this budget and you put this budget behind ads to these products. But if we don't really know if people are going to buy the products, you could end up spending a huge amount of money for nothing. Yes, you might get people going and looking at the website, you might with fingers crossed, get some people signing up to the mailing list, but you don't have any guarantees that you're gonna make any sales. So what I recommend instead is step five, you wait until some sales are happening, and you'll see after a while, if you've got, I don't know, 10 prints for sale, and you've seen that three of them are what people typically buy, that they're the most popular ones that people buy. That's the moment that you say, okay, well, if I'm making, 10 sales a month from these. What if I put some ads behind that and I started making, say, 100 of these per month? How would that change my business? So for me, you only start using ads when you've got something that's working organically, right? So if you're doing some marketing, you're sending people to look at that listing, it's converting, people are buying it, then really what you wanna do is get more people to buy it, right? And that's when you use the ads. And you can use Etsy ads on the Etsy platform, you could use Pinterest ads if you're using the Pinterest strategy, or you could use Facebook, you can use Google, you can use any, any of it, right? Any, it doesn't matter which one you choose, you choose the relevant one for where your listings are. So in conclusion, folks, art sales online don't just happen. You are going to make them happen, right? You are in control of your art business. You're in control of how many of these sales that you want to make. And you can see by now, I think probably with this video and the previous video, that there are some steps that you need to follow, right? There's some hoops to jump through. Now, if you're really struggling with all of this and you'd like a bit of help and support, don't forget that I do have my membership open at the moment, the Art Business Academy. That's a monthly membership 
for artists looking to build their business and you get help and support and of course there's a ton of content you get everything you need it's kind of like a one-stop shop to building an art business so if you're watching this and you're thinking I really want to do that but I'm I'm unsure about that email piece or I'm unsure about the customer or oh my god you know I could buy the course on on the business planning for sure but now I feel a bit alone I want to hang out with other artists doing the same and I'd like to be able to ask my questions to Sophie directly and have them answered, which is something I do every month, then you might want to consider joining our membership. It's just 32, 32 Australian dollars per month. You can sign up on the link below. There's no contract. So if you don't like it after a couple of months, you can leave. We hope you don't. We hope you stay and enjoy the process of building your business. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I'm pretty passionate about helping you all make more sales, as you can probably understand. Like I said at the beginning, the process is simple. There are these different parts, though. You do need to go through all of these steps. Missing one out is mean, it's going to mean, it's a bit like an ingredients, isn't it? You're going to make a cake. There are seven ingredients of the cake, but you've only got five of them. You know, if the two, two are missing from the cake, like your eggs and your sugar's missing, that's not really going to make a great cake. It's the same here. All right, so make sure that you follow all of these steps and give us a shout out in the comments if you are excited and you're going to be doing this process and you want to make more sales, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.